going to show you one of the rarest things uh, that I've got and that anybody's ever seen. And I've collected, I started this 60 years ago, which is uh, quite a while really. I wanted to show you though one thing, that catcher's mask right up there, 1878. They don't even have one in Cooperstown. That's a medical kit with morphine in it. The tablets, World War I, 1917, it just folds up. And, you know, I started collecting back in 1950, I guess, about when I got my first car. And I wasn't thinking about a museum, or, but I just kept getting more stuff and more stuff. And finally, I had so much I had to do something with it. This is an old bank front that came out of a store up at Yampa, Colorado, and it was the store was just one big room called the Hernage Mercantile, 1907. And they uh, added this bank and called it the Stockman's Bank. Come on, we'll show you a few odd, some things that, uh, that, that we think make the place interesting and that nobody else has maybe ever seen. One of our favorites, and one of mine, is uh, this complete set of license plates for Colorado up through 1980. This, uh, that orange license plate and the yellow one from Wyoming, those were made out of soybeans and during World War II several states used them. Uh, Illinois from, uh, from 42 to 48 the war was over but they kept them an extra year. Wyoming only did it one year but it was saving on metal. Uh, you know they worked all right uh, only uh, you know you'd park in the barnyard and a goat or a Horse eat your license plate. Sure, there's a picture of me in the 1924 Buick. That's the second car I ever got. I still have it. We had it in Craig's 50th anniversary and then we had it in Craig's 100th anniversary. It looks like a crawler, but it's a Fordson tractor in the 20s. And they took the whole front axle out from under it and the rear wheels off and put these tracks on it. Called it a track pull but it was, a, it was a Fordson tractor originally. And Ford just about put everybody out of business in the 20s because he had such a network. He couldn't use the name Ford. He had to use something else because somebody had that copyrighted and wanted a royalty and he wouldn't do it. There's a toilet right over here, a wooden toilet. And it came out of a lodge called the Kelly Lodge up South Fork. And in the early 1900s, when Roosevelt was president, he came out here and hunted. And he stayed with Kelly's because they were from New York. And he'd been the governor in New York. And this is pretty famous, really. Our 26 presidents sat there. And it's factory made. Up under the lid, it tells how to use it. You put charcoal, charcoal dust, coal ashes in there, and then you just shake it on whatever you got, and then you have to carry that out. It was patented in 1888, heaps patent. Here's one thing that I always liked, but about wore it out, so I don't show it much anymore. It's a mouse trap, and it's a self-setting self mouse trap. The bait's locked in by that little door right there, and as the mouse goes in and looks for it, he goes in there, and when he gets to the back, it's like a teeter-totter and his weight makes that come up and makes the door drop. Then the only way you can get out of there is to crawl up past that piece and through that hole there and that drops him down into a jar and reset, lifts that up and resets it. This is all Moffat Railroad stuff. And the, the railroad, uh, of course, ended in Craig they intended to go to Salt Lake, something kind of unusual. A lot of people never seen them. They took these and they're made out of bamboo. They took these and they would uh, put a message on it and hold it up for the engineer on the locomotive and he would take his arm and grab it, read the message. They didn't have to stop that way. Then throw this off and the, and the person doing it then would just retrieve the message. Probably one of the rarest things right here is, a, for example, of the railroad, it's hard to even see it in there, is that 
button that says 209 Hitchcock and Tinkler. They were the contractors for the Moffat Tunnel and all the workers wore those. And that's the only one I've ever seen. There may be several, but there wouldn't be very many of them. This came from the Adolph Coors family up in Golden. How would you mow your lawn? Well, this is a pony mower. You'd hook a little pony up right here and he'd pull that mower. This is one of my favorites, is this typewriter. It's an 1896 and they called it an upstrike or a blind rider. It's got two sets of keys, one for the capital letters and one for the small case and no shift key. So you had to type here and here both. But the best part, calling it an upstrike, or the keys are all fastened here and they hit up underneath. You couldn't see what you were typing. So when line one got up here where you could read it, you're already typing line three. I don't think they used them very long. <laughs> this is a nice carriage, but that doesn't impress me, the nice carriage part. What impresses me is that they made a way to protect the step from being muddy when they got in and out. Now that's impressive. That basket that's on the floor and this little basket over here were used to take a body from the home to the mortuary. And they're about 1900. How about these early chainsaws? A collector back in New York who was also a dealer had collected them and I found out about them and bought them from him. The whole collection went back and got them. This one's kind of unusual. It's called a sally saw with that round blade. They had to turn the blade itself horizontally or vertically because the motor had to stay upright to work. This is one of the earlier chainsaws. This country, the United States, never had a chainsaw till after World War II. And this is a German chainsaw, that two-man chainsaw, that came, it was built in about 37. The Allies had trouble figuring out at first when they were going through France in World War II how the Germans could cut down so many trees so quick. And, but they had chainsaws before we ever had any. There's a plastic saddle. And right after World War II, a company up in Lusk, Wyoming, built a few of them. They're going to capitalize on plastics. They were just coming into use. And they built about 60 of them. Uh, they sold, or they gave a couple of them to Roy Rogers. He had them in their collection for a long time. They finally sold them. That's the old lady that we got a lot of stuff from, Bitzer. She was 88 when she passed away. And I think a fun thing, and I don't know if you can get it, She had a brother in the insane asylum, and that's what they called it back then, insane asylum. And if you can see, it says Board of Lunacy Commissioners. They wouldn't allow that now. Lunacy Commissioner wrote her a letter, Superintendent, when she was like 13 or 14 years old. <laughs> in fact, he has not intelligence enough to write a letter. He is very Much worse than he used to be. Used It'll to never be any better. Oh, smooth mouth brown. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. But that was Mrs. Bitzer. That was all my family except my father, my grandparents and uncles. Didn't have one of my dad because he was, they were his picture. I think one thing that people like about it, and I like it because is the difference. There's so many, there's so much variety. You don't have too much of any one thing.